What's going on guys? It's your boy and one half the duo. Today we're bringing you a special in-depth look of Sky Strikers piloted by one of my best boys, Carlos. But before we get into the video, I would like to all remind you that we have new videos coming out every Monday and Wednesdays. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. Well, without further ado, would you like to take it over, my man? Yep, yep, yep. Thank you for having me, brother. Thank you. Hey, no problem, man. Thanks for showing your deck with us. Um, so first, just showing off my Sky Striker token, and then we get into the profile. So, standard, 3-ray, best card in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Then I play three rows. Um, I've been debating playing two recently, but because I play Desires, um, I just, I, yeah, I just run the three, and also, I mean, no, if I draw one ray or one rose, I mean, that lets me play the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, so that's why I run the three. Uh, it hasn't come up where I've actually bricked with it, so yeah, I've just kind of just been going with it. Now, with the three rows, do you ever draw multiples and regret it? I mean, yesterday I had a bad instance, but it's one of those things where it's not going to happen very often with Pot of Desires, but um, realistically, I can't say, other than yesterday, that I've drawn to and actually like been upset about it because normally if I'm drawing rows and I'm summoning rows that means I didn't have Ray. So if my rose gets destroyed, which more likely it will, I have the other rose in hand just to be able to play next turn. And then I'm playing um three ash, best hand trap. I'm playing three effect bailer. I'm playing these just because of the access code play. Um yeah the access code with Celine and then yeah, the needle fiber. The needle fiber exactly yeah it's absolutely busted. Yeah. And it's also effect bailer is also not terrible either way because then you figure the needle fiber and stuff like that and then yeah yeah that's actually really really smart yeah um i'm playing two ogre it's worked out for me so far pretty well um i've been using it i mean one of the decks i obviously needle fiber everyone's playing needle fiber um also it's helped me a lot with dino now you're also playing ogre just to respect that matchup with the numerons yeah yes ex yeah exactly so that was the, the first idea of it I, I was just worrying about um Zexo and how I was gonna be able to take care of that. So I thought Ogre was like the perfect to be able to like handle a Zexo and the Numeron. Cool, cool. Um, I play the one pink. Interesting. Yeah, so I play the one pink just because I think the card's absolutely busted. I can't believe this was at three um, at one point. So yeah, and I, it's, it's a more of a go in second build. So I just think paying your top is one of those things that I can bait something out to be able to play. Yeah, exactly. And even giving you that large beat stick from Monster with 26. Plus having the option to go in that Zeke later on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Zeke actually like changed uh, the build. I wouldn't say uh, it's changed it a decent amount just because you could you're able to play Pinger Tops and actually have it just as a, like a monster, like excluding just the effect. Um, I'm playing two Shark Cannon. Why not the third one? Uh, that's something I've been like back and forth with as well, debating if I want to play the third. I think playing three is good, but so far the two is done just enough for me where I, where I don't need to play the third. I might actually maybe put the third one in, but for now it's been doing extremely well, so that's why I've left it on it. Mostly the, the idea is just to banish Golden Boys. Yeah, because that's definitely one of your toughest matchups. Exactly, and also I like the block, the block dragon, and then I have a cool interaction with Harold where I could just um, shark cannon the, the Harold and then be able to use his effect as well. I'm playing um two Afterburner. Interesting. Why two? I've seen a lot of builds playing one. Uh, I thought the card is way too good to play at one i mean it, it most of the time i would say 90 percent of the time i'm gonna have my three spells in grape so it, it's a monster removal and uh like a spell card removal as well so yeah i mean it, it just helps uh, take care of big monsters that a lot of the sky striker monsters won't be able to take care of yeah it definitely forces those interactions in those plays especially because i'm either forced to either negate it or let it go through and hopefully you don't have any follow-up plays which Normally, you do. Yeah, so, I mean, I like playing the two, but, like, sometimes when I just draw the one, I activate it, pop one monster, Kagari, get it back, and then destroy another monster, which mm -hmm. is pretty interesting overall. It breaks the board pretty easily. Playing two at Oinker. Hopefully, this card goes back to three. It's absolutely nuts. I love it. It's one of my favorite cards in the deck, and, yeah, there's not really much to say about that card. One multi-row. Card's nuts. It's what keeps you in the game for the long run. I'm playing one Eagle Booster. Interesting. 
Why? Yeah, so this is a card I this is my most like recent addition to the deck. I think this card actually is absolutely broken. It has helped me numerous times with being able to protect my either my uh Shizuku or something that I did very recently was I, I had my access code, it would have been destroyed. I activated my ego booster and then next turn I won up like easily. Yeah, it's definitely stronger than that dino matchup as well. Yes. Yeah, it even came through for you for the Orcus matchup, especially in the grind game, you know, being protected from card effect destruction and by battle really really came through for you to win that game and yeah it did i do not regret it at all i think it's been one of the best additions i've like me so i have a quick question though yeah so i see you don't play any jamming waves do you not like that card at all i don't uh i think the i okay i think the card is good i just think in the format right now i don't know how good it actually is just because the deck you're probably gonna worry about the most is uh listen realistically they're just gonna chain and um exactly so yeah it, it's just one of those dead cards but see cut like just again if i have to worry about a trap card afterburner just to, does the job just enough for me so that's the reason i i also play two as well but yeah just jamming wave didn't come up enough where i wanted it in my deck i realized a lot of the time that i was using jamming waves it was like on my own card to destroy a monster and i just didn't like that so I yeah took it out. you'd rather keep the card advantage yes exactly one hornet Card's crazy, love it. Yeah, nothing more to say. Yeah, nothing, yeah, nothing more <laughs> to a, say. It's at one for a reason. Yes, I'm playing uh, two area zero. Yeah, uh, I'm not playing it at three just because I uh, because engage isn't back at three and stuff. Although I really wish it was unbanned in general. Yeah, I just feel like if I played three, it would just be too bricky for me. So I just yeah, I just don't play it. Yeah, I'm playing um one Mystic Mind. Wow, the degenerate player playing Mystic Mind. Yes, 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 yes. At, at one point, um, I was playing the three realized i didn't need to do it so i just left it at one i think the card is absolutely broken yeah and it just works extremely well with sky striker so that's why yeah especially when you sit on that hayate the whole game right yeah exactly I mean, it's very it's very easy to do yeah mystic mind hayate keep attacking um and yeah worst comes to worst it's very easy to destroy as well because like i said i was talking about before i might have my afterburner to pop a monster and again most of the times i will have the three spells in grave so i could just pop my mystic mind or my multi roll to pop it so again, it's very easy to get rid of it. Yeah, it's really interesting that you do play it at all because the synergy is so well. And since Sky Trigger is on a huge crush after, you know, multiple ban lists. Yeah. Yeah, I can really fight against those combo decks now. Exactly. You know, being able to check those combo decks like Ad Emancipator, Dino, Infernal Noble Knights, Synchro, uh, Lich. To get them to play at your own pace, I think that's something very, very strong in this format. Yes, I agree. Um, The one, Terraforming. Love it. It's just a way to get up my areas. Are obviously a Mystic Mine. I'm playing the one set rotation. The reason I'm playing the set rotation is just because I I found myself in moments where I'm stuck and I draw this card where I have like in a way I need the Mystic Mine. So I kind of just use a set rotation for the most part, unless I have it in hand. Then I just it's also a way just to like bait out certain things to have my areas there and stuff like that. Something else I've also added. Playing three pot of desires. Now this card is very very crazy yeah can you explain why you like to play it yeah so uh as you know for a long time i didn't want to play this card i was playing the foolish burial goods package i just think every single time i've done my pot of desires it's never actually banished everything that i've needed and stuff so it still lets me play and i've also come to the realization is by the time i'm using pot of desires and stuff like that i might be in a, a sticky situation anyway because normally I'll use my Shizu and do all that stuff for first before I activate my Pot of Desires. So again, if I'm, how you'd say, like, the banishing I wouldn't worry about because at that point, if I'm not drawing two cards or whatever, if I'm banishing those, I would probably lose the game anyway. So, like, it's just worth risk every single time. Yeah, and I also remember for a very long time that you were really against playing this card. Yes, yes, yes. But through playing through different play styles, different strategies, you finally came to the conclusion that this is the best overall. Yeah, exactly. It's just uh, a lot worse in game, honestly. Um, so yeah, so far it's been doing me justice. Um, I'm playing two card by. I wasn't playing this card before. Uh, I don't see why I wasn't, honestly. Um, it's a spell, engrave or whatever. You could banish Golden Boy. Um, it also protects my um, Hiyates around. It's protecting my Shizukus from getting Ash and stuff. So, again, an extremely like good card. Now, why not play three? Honestly, it. I wanted to hit. I wanted to be at exactly 40, so a lot of the cards I, I play, I wouldn't say I play weird ratios, but at the same time, I don't play the normal three ratios just because uh, I get the cards enough where I don't need to run the three. And you and typically, you, you don't need yeah. the third one anyway exactly. because your strikers can play through hand traps and yeah, disruptions exactly. fairly easily. Yes, exactly. The Cosmic. Yep. For the Elwich. <laughs> yeah, again, for Elwich um, and stuff, and 
Honestly, I just think um, banishing a card is extremely good. The thousand life points never really affects it. So yeah, I just think the card is extremely good. I was playing Mystical Space Typhoon for a little bit just because of my Area Zero plays and stuff, but ultimately, I just decided to play the, the three rows instead. I'm playing the one rota. Card is another ray. <laughs> uh, upstart, because why not? Yeah, yeah it's, you... it's a spell engrave and a draw card. When it says draw a card, you play it. You play it. Yeah. <laughs> you play it. Um, I'm playing two Imperm. Um, I'm not playing three just because I again my ratios. I wanted to hit exactly 40 I think the card is extremely good, but how my how I like my deck I actually like playing a lot more I would prefer to run the three effect baiters just because of the access code play at that Yeah, that's true. But have you ever thought about playing a 41 card deck at all? Uh, honestly, no I, I, No, I want I just want to have my deck as least as I can just to break it down easily um, and Get to exactly what I need so that's why I don't plan on running 41 if at that point, if I'm running 41, I'm just gonna take out upstart. True. Well, extra deck time. Let's get, let's get into the extra. I'm ha I have Rishizuku, obviously. Ooh, those ulties be looking nice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I just had to. It's my favorite deck. I've been playing the deck for over a year, so I just decided to pretty much get almost highest rarity on everything. Yep. Nothing to explain. It, you gotta play Rishizuku. Searches everything. Exactly. Um, playing three Kagari. I have the OTS Kagari. I have the Kagari signed by Ravi Koa. Uh, I actually played against him at uh, the Indianapolis Regional. Yeah, he was a really nice guy. He signed my card and stuff. And yeah, such a cool experience. But what deck was he playing at the Regional? He was playing a deck that his like stream <laughs> made. Um, it was very interesting. I mean, he was happy with like me playing Sky Trigger because he obviously like loves the deck <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. That's a cool story. Yes, I'm playing uh, the alternate art Kagari. I actually love how it looks, so I decided just not to purchase the other Kagari. Why just not? Just, I, I just love the alternate art. I, I I really, really do, so I just didn't like buy the OTS. Yep, nothing more to say. Figure guy, good specter spells, that's it. Yes, yes. The card is broken, I'm really happy it's at three. You know, engage Ben, so the head would be something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um two Hiate. Uh cards nuts. it's one of those things where you don't draw ray, you draw rose, then you just send ray. After you attack or whatever and send it to grave and then you have your ray engraved. It's absolutely broken. Um I'm not playing three. I know a lot of people run three, and I was also running three for a long time. I just think I've been playing the deck recently. I'm kind of just like saving my resources, and I use them at times where I really need it. So the the two have just has been perfect for me. Playing the one Kana. Uh, this is also one of those for Outlitch and for uh, Dino. Quick effect target either the Golden Boy or I target um, Conductor, and it, it stops the attack and stuff. It's broken. I love it. Playing two Zeke. Uh, I also really really like this card. It, it takes a monster away from your monster zone as well. And then I think the secondary effect is is extremely good for like the area zero to be able to combo off a lot more. And it also banishes the monster. So like. Yeah, it definitely makes Striker go in the route of being a little bit more combo based, which makes it more interesting. Yes, I agree. And I remember when it first was announced or came out, people were kind of iffy, but I think it was very good for the deck. Uh, no, I extremely agree. I think the deck definitely needed a Link 2, and I mean, I think this is just enough for it, to be honest. Because at the end, realistically, what I'm doing is I'm taking away a monster from the monster zone, I'm banishing a monster from the opponent's field. And then I normally just link this up and go into Shizuku again, but again, most of it is just to take the monster away from the monster zone. I'm playing one Hita. Yep, skill at Ash Blossom. Yeah, exactly. Every, normally everyone plays Ash, so yeah, yeah, I just play it, and it's very easy to get into just because if I have another monster, then I I, I can just summon out Kagari and then go into Hita extremely easy. Very um, clutch. Yes, yes, yes. It's been working extremely well. I don't use it, I would say, often, but the times I do use it, it normally wins me the game. One uh, Needle Fiber. Card is busted. It's broken. Um... There's not really much to say about it. Yep, you just grab it for effect failure, and then you go into this next card. Then we go into Celine. This card is absolutely nuts as well. Yeah, that's why I'm running the three effect veiler to be able to spell summon effect veiler. Well, again, how Angela was saying. So needle fiber, self effect veiler, effect veiler to Celine, Celine effect, spell summon back my effect veiler, and then go into yep. probably the best link for in the game right now. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Access code. If you did so, like how strike how guy striker is. Almost every single Link monster, different attribute or whatever, so I can banish my wind, my light, my water, all that stuff. So I'm, I have like four or five pops normally. So. Yeah, it's insane. And plus, the Selene also yes. adds to the fire, yep. giving you a light target. Exactly. It's so. just absurd in this list. Yes. Absurd. Again, for the mo uh, for a long time, again, I was having, I had Boral Sword. Um, I just think this card is a lot better and stuff. And again, normally by that, well, by the time I'm summoning this, I don't have anything in my monster zone, which is very key for my spells that I have set. Well, that's it for the main deck and the extra deck. Now, let's finally get into that side deck. Yes, I'm playing three Dark Ruler. 
the card is absolutely broken. It lets me play when the opponent doesn't want to let me play. <laughs> um, I, I had a very cool interaction the other day where um, I was playing a Dino player and he had pink on the field already. I had Mystic Mind. He had like three negates on board. I, I activated Dark Ruler no more. So negate everything, then I went to Mystic Mind, and then went into Hiati and pretty much won the game from there. Yeah, it's good because that Pinger Tops could definitely hit that Mystic Mind. And that's what I didn't want to happen because I just knew at that point I needed my Mystic Mind to be able to play the game and be able to break the board piece by piece, and that's literally exactly what happened. <laughs> One of my favorite cards. <laughs> just be more degenerate. Yes, 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 the Mystic Mind package. Yep, there we go, that's it. Yes, again, it's... The, the card's absolutely broken, so it's one of those things where... Where I'm playing a board that is really hard to break, I actually missed mine, and from there I normally can win the game. <laughs> yeah, nothing more to say. Just the gender here, it's fine. Yes, yes, yes. I'm playing two Heavy Storm. Interesting. Yeah, uh, I'm running those two just because I had instances where people would activate cards where it wouldn't let me activate my spell cards. So I side that in, destroy that, it lets me play again. Okay, I'm running three, there could only be one. Yeah, this card is extremely broken. It doesn't, I would say it sometimes um, impacts me and stuff, but it impacts the opponent a lot more. So I don't really worry about it. And then at the point where I need to destroy this card, it's again, very easy to destroy. So it's something that I necessarily do not ever worry about. It's helped me out a ton. I had this main for a little bit because I, again, I just think the deck is ex it's extremely broken. Okay against Rock, Dino, and yeah, but I, again, I'm making a go second build, so I decided just to take it out and stuff. I'm running Tunabiru. I also had this main for a little bit. The problem that I had overall was it would stay in my monster zone for a little bit too long, if even if it was just a turn too long, and I just ultimately just didn't like that. So I decided to decide that in case I absolutely like needed and stuff. Yeah, pretty standard, especially yeah. getting rid of like those you know, combo decks like Infernal Bulls or yeah, exactly. you know, Nibiru that Synchro Eldritch play yes and then dd crow playing to dd crow yeah just another hate for golden boy and stuff so <laughs> yeah quick question would you run anything else in place of the dd crow or would you just leave it as it is again i i'm just gonna go very much based off of outlitch is an unreal deck um the, i think the deck is extremely good and i think dd crow hurts the deck a lot just because of like managing golden boy is very very key and stuff so honestly that is the ma the main reason because Realistically speaking, there's not a lot of decks that I would say I 100% struggle with. Uh, although, yes, I, there's obviously hard matchups and stuff, but I think uh, one of the decks that I, I like would say I would fear the most is like Golden Boy and also Dino in a way. So, again, the, like uh, being able to DD Crow, the miscellaneous and stuff is absolutely like, crazy just because it stops a lot of their plays. And yeah. Very true. Well, that just about does it for the video. I want to thank you guys all for watching. And I want to give a special thanks to my boy Callers for sharing his deck profile with us and giving his insight into how he plays with Sky Strikers. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions for Carlos, please leave them in the comment section below. And he will get to them as soon as he can. Well, that just about does it. See you later. See ya.